on this edition of Roland Rambles, we're going to talk about being a kid. But we're not going to talk about actually being a kid. We're going to talk about being an adult that grows up and is still a kid. I think one of the greatest tragedies in life is that as people get older, they have a tendency to feel this need to mature, to grow up, to behave a certain way that's expected of an older adult. Um, not being in my 20s anymore by far, I am well aware of this. There are a lot of people who call me grandpa online, even though it's, uh, I'm not even halfway done with my life if, a, if the typical uh, life expectancy of people in my family is to uh, account. But there is this notion that somehow because I've gotten older, or as people generally get older, that they should behave differently. Now, this is not entirely false. It is true that as you grow up and you grow older and you gain experience and wisdom, you should absolutely grow up. You should change in the way that you approach the world. Because when you have more information available to you, when you have more experience with which to build more heuristics, to understand the behavior of others, to understand the way things work, all of this extra information that you gather, both hard and soft, you know, actual like book information and stuff based on your experiences, all of that combined should inform you such that you'd behave differently. For example, um, there are a lot of young people who have died because they thought it was a good idea to get up on the edge of a waterfall <laughs> and do a stupid TikTok video or Instagram picture or whatever at the edge of a very large drop. And uh, invariably, when they fell down the very large drop and died, it didn't go very well for them. What with the whole dying thing? But remember, it's not the fall that kills you. It's that sudden stop at the end. Anyway, these people thought it was a good idea to jump off a waterfall by accident. Being older, you probably would not get up on that waterfall in the first place. You probably would not do something like that because you know better. You've seen the videos of other people doing it and you don't have that risk-taking behavior that comes with being pretty young. So, because you know better <laughs> than to take such a risk, you don't. These are good things. It is good, in general, when people grow up in this way. When you don't do stupid things because you know how not to. Now, a friendly reminder, we all have to start from somewhere. Something is on my glasses. We all have to start from somewhere, which means that we all start by making mistakes. In fact, if there is a single person on this planet that has managed to avoid making mistakes, um, they don't exist, period. I'm not even gonna finish that. They do not exist. Because you don't learn what is right without doing what is wrong, or at least treading in those waters. The freedom of thought that comes with youth, that's when you learn what is right and what is not, what is good and what is bad, based on your forays into those things. For example, using curse words. Societally, it's not okay to use certain words in polite conversation or around people that you're not very familiar with that you know are comfortable with them. You don't know this as a six-year-old. So six-year-olds dropping F-bombs, they'll say all sorts of those nifty four-letter words I love so much, but they'll say it completely innocently. They don't know that they're offending somebody else, potentially, by saying it. And arguably, the entire notion of certain words offending people stems from the fact that those people have chosen to give those words that power over them. I've long said this. Words only have the power over you that you choose to grant them. You do not have to be a slave to words. You should not let words control you. In fact, I have a video somewhere where the thumbnail literally just says, don't let words control you. But you learn that even if the word, whichever word, is bad in society, like other people will frown upon you, they'll think less of you, they'll think negatively on you, and there will be social repercussions, you learn that even, you know, even though that may be the case, um, the word may not inherently be evil, just certain people respond to it. And this is kind of where the conditioning comes in that comes with growing up as a kid. 
as a kid, you have to learn that if you drop F-bombs, it offends some people. But if people behave like they're horrifically scandalized and offended when you say it and you don't know what you're doing, you will learn on a much more visceral level that not only are those words considered bad by some people, but they are just plain bad and you will be harmed for saying them. These are two different lessons. And this is kind of, not exactly, but it's kind of the split that I'm getting into here when I say that as you get older, you should never stop being a kid. Before my dad died, one of the things that um, he told me that he really liked about the fact, the way that uh, I bring up my own kid is that I play like I'm a kid. I don't have this stuffy sort of like, everything has to be serious, everything, you know, everything isn't some big dramatic thing. It's just like, hey, let's have a good time, you know? And I genuinely have fun with my own kid. Oh, the horror, right? So terrible. But I genuinely have fun. Um, and it comes off that way. And the kid learns that certain things, you know, that fun is okay, that play is okay, that it's okay to explore. Um, but there are a lot of people who will just adopt this really stiff style of interacting with everybody. Um, this, this bitter sort of like everything is serious and probably bad out over or outlook on the entire world. Now, if you've seen enough of my videos, you may be somewhat led to believe that I'm one of these people. And that is not the case at all. Um, I do have a very strong cynical streak, but I temper that cynical streak with the fact that, you know, some things just aren't worth the trouble. Some things just are not that big of a deal. Uh, some people love hiding in my blind spot so I can't get over and I don't see them there. Yeah, that's right. Driving commentary. You knew what you were getting into whenever you started watching something called Rolling Rambles. It's not called Sitting Rambles or Stay in Place Rambles. We're talking while we're driving and some people just do really annoying things. But when you grow up, you have to learn to look through a serious lens without letting that serious lens become your identity. And that's really, really hard. It's hard if you have good parents that don't do that crap, but it's, it's hard regardless, but a lot of parents do that crap. They'll just do it. Um, they'll make everything this stuffy serious, like, you know, th there are a lot of parents that uh, they do what, what would I call it? There's a word for it, uh, catastrophizing. That's the word. They catastrophize everything. You know, everything is a disaster. Everything's a big deal. And that imparts upon kids that sort of behavior too. And when those kids grow up, they become these horrible adults. But it also can be learned. If you hang out around lousy people that make everything a catastrophe, that get by in life, that get attention through making everything a disaster, you'll start adopting that as a reactive mindset. I think it's really important to not do that. Don't become someone who reacts to everything in some sort of, you know, hyped up, um, upset, you know, just, it's not a healthy way to be. The kid in you, okay, does not care, does not see F-bombs as some big scandalous thing to have flip out and have meetings over. Uh, it's, it's just a word, and some people don't like it, and that's okay. Um, try to be sensitive to those people, but don't let those people's sensitivities dictate whether you can use that word everywhere. You know, that's what the kid should learn, but the kid in you doesn't care. Doesn't care what anyone thinks about that. And a lot of the problem with growing up is that you become rigid in your thinking, in your ways, in your understanding of stuff. You cement a lot of things. I mean, by the time you're 40, a lot of the things that you think and behave like and so on are pretty hard stuck and very hard to change because absent some sort of long trauma to knock you out of it, you're probably not going to get any different. So I think it's really important, especially if you're younger. Yeah, it's really important that you learn not to jump off waterfalls by accident or, um, leave rice on the stove cooking for so long that it potentially catches on fire. I mean, it's important that you learn these things. It's important that you watch out for these things, but it's also important that you don't go, 
oh God, every time I turn on my stove, every the house could catch on fire. You know, it's important that you respect it, but don't become some sort of person that just makes everything a big friggin' deal. And I feel like we are moving towards whole generations of children brought up by adults that when they were children had it pretty easy. And because of this softness, because they were not given, um, they weren't given boundaries and told the rules. They were just, um, it was basically just, hey, watch TV and get out of my way. Then when they go to school, they do things that their parents should have filtered out and the, and the teachers catastrophize it. Oh, 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 Susie said the F word. So scandalous. Or, or, or Billy dropped an N-bomb. Oh, it's so terrible. Oh, well, we got to call the parents and have a meeting and all of a sudden just a big production. And the child learns only that everything is a catastrophe because when the parents alone were bringing them up, they weren't really given much attention. But oh, if they do this bad thing, first of all, oh, it's a catastrophe. But second, oh, it has so much power. <laughs> you can kind of see, if you're following along here, you can kind of see the, the utter toxicity of this whole thing. Just how dangerous this really is to the formation of a person. And the problem is that as you grow older, um, th these sorts of rules get cemented. So everything's a catastrophe and, and those catastrophes are powerful becomes something that instead of understanding that it can be a catastrophe, you go, oh, it must be a catastrophe. And how can I use this catastrophe to my advantage? Sometimes, some people are like that. Other people are like, well, I can't do anything and I feel locked up and isolated and alone because anything I do could become a catastrophe. So rather than having well-balanced people that can see those two things, you have a split between people who lock themselves up, hide behind a keyboard for the rest of their lives and never do anything because they're afraid that anything they do could become a giant catastrophe. Cancel culture is basically um, the opposite end of this. You know, that anybody that was inclined that way, they've gotten way worse over time because of cancel culture and watching all these people that had a little bit of a wrong opinion have their entire, like getting debanked, having their, you know, losing their jobs, all of their family members doxxed and harassed and threatened, all because they expressed a wrong opinion on the internet. And the other side of it, the people who think that everything's a catastrophe and should be, you know, used to get yourself the attention you didn't get in your childhood, you know, well, that's the way I get attention is by, you know, causing a ruckus that won't cause me consequences. I do believe that if you're watching this, you probably feel like I just summed up all of Gen Z's experience in one shot there. Like that that's the whole 2010s and 2020s so far. That's the way that it has gone. It's it, it's all just a disaster and there's one side that wants to basically hurt everybody with as long as it doesn't have any consequences for them and another side that's like well I'm not going to do anything because I'm afraid of there being these unfair consequences I see all around me so I'm just going to shut up and not exist you know if you wonder why it is that people are more miserable now than they've ever been in their lives there it is the whole lockdown thing instituted by psychotic leftists that ran and make no mistake it was leftist governors that put all that in place. It was not President Trump nor President Biden. Neither of them can do lockdowns. The governor in your state is actually the most powerful person in your entire political life. Because while federal policy overrides state policy, it's also limited by the 10th Amendment. Anyway, sorry, I got a little sidetracked there. The point is that lockdowns really hammered this um, dichotomy of people in way further than it already was. So if you've noticed that a whole lot of people are giant pricks after 2021 or so, especially when the whole Vax thing hit the fan, if you noticed a lot of people are pricks, it's because they were pricks. They were pricks all along. They, 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 it was never like a thing where they weren't, but it was tempered by the fact that they had some social understanding. They had some of that balance still in there. And when the whole lockdown thing happened, they felt like, oh, well, my, my position is the right position and other people's is the wrong position. And I can, 
you know, I can point at those other people and get them canceled if they disagree with me. You know, I'm, I'm talking predominantly leftist type people here. Um, but obviously, if you think that you can just wield power and not be held responsible for your bad behavior, um, human nature is you're probably going to do it. And the only thing that holds you back is the knowledge that doing it is a bad thing um, and the experience that doing it is a bad thing that will have consequences for you. But, you know, thanks to the internet and to um, the political polarization of the United States in particular, but the world really, uh, we have no shortage of people who have completely dropped their masks, not, not their COVID masks, but their political ideological masks, and decided that, hey, I can be an abuser as long as I have the right opinions. So what does all this have to do with don't, don't ever stop being a kid? Well, these people stopped being kids long ago. <clears throat> I would actually argue that Gen Z in particular and Gen Alpha is gearing up to be the same. Um, have been, they were completely robbed of a real childhood. They, they didn't have the opportunity to have healthy parents mentally and, you know, just a, a healthy, cohesive family unit. Decades upon decades of the welfare system destroying poorer families, forcing mothers to separate from fathers to get welfare benefits. You know, th there's a whole laundry list of reasons why things are miserable, but Gen Z in particular they had to deal with these parents that, you know, that basically their parents were boomers and sometimes Gen X, and they weren't parented properly or at all in a lot of cases. There's a lot of absentee parents, but not like the parent, and not like the parent is not there, more like the parent just doesn't care. Watch TV and leave me alone. You know, I have work to do, or I'm done with work, and it's really just self centered parents. Uh, or, or lacking a parent, and then the other one is self-centered because mommy needs a break. Mommy needs a box of wine to decompress from watching you little turds all day. That's what these kids are growing up with, or these kids, what the, the young adults of today really uh, have grown up with. And that's why they're so damaged. And that's why they seem so much older and more miserable then even people like me who are part of Gen Y, Millennials, etc., you know, obviously we're older, but, but Gen Y or Gen Z looks so miserable because they were never allowed to be children in the first place. You know, it's like they grew up with crap like, you know, predator panics and uh, the satanic panic hadn't really worn off and just this, all this crap around them. And then all of that was replaced with wokeism, social justice, the, the blue church, the leftist cult, um, political polarization, which really arguably started with Obama, but, you know, and then the internet meant that there were eyes on them no matter what they did. And the problem is that they get addicted to looking at their phones because that's how they socialize, looking at the internet because that's how they socialize, and it never stops. There's a 24 7 tap of bullying and hate aimed at them from other people in their age group and, and even other people that aren't in their age group. You know, look at, for example, what was it, the Catholic school kid, um, oh God, I don't remember, was his name Nick Sandman? That the media completely ripped, um, saying that he was this smug racist um, getting in this Indian guy's face who was getting in his face. You know, they completely lied about it. And 24-7, all the students in that school, I guarantee you to this day, all the students that were in that school, not even in that class, but in that school, that have ever been in that school, are suffering consequences because people still believe that that school is full of evil right-wing racist jerks that hate people. Imagine, imagine your childhood where you look around and all you see is this. This, this level of just everybody hates everybody in some way or another. There's a constant tap of, of hate and disgust. And you can't be a kid because the problem is being a kid means that you don't care about all that stuff. You don't you don't care about other people's opinions. You're you're shielded from the world to some extent by your parents, um, by your social groups, by you know. And you can't be fully shielded from the world. But the thing is, you need to be introduced to it in small doses, and those doses increase as you get older. No, no, no. If if you're if you're a 12 year old today. <laughs> 
or if you were a 12 year old 10 years ago, all you get when you look around, everything around you is just miserable. You're not allowed to be a kid because you know what? If you make the mistake of just doing some stupid thing that some kid would do, because kids make more mistakes and that's they're because they're more creative, because they have less of this experience and wisdom to bound them in, they experiment more. And guess what? If you make a mistake, you learn from it. But you better not make a mistake if you're a kid today, because guess what? If you make a mistake and you're a kid today, everybody is going to get on you for the rest of your life about that one dumb thing that you did as a kid. And as you grow up, yeah, your inner kid's dead. Because even if you're my age, you know, what happens if you if you spout wrong think on the internet? What happens if you do something a little stupid? Well, there's no more. And, and I covered this in my previous video about bullying and racism and quitting Pizza Hut. There is no more of the whole, like, you've got this conflict that won't resolve, get in a fist fight, you know, and that's the end of it because nobody walks away from getting in a fight. <laughs> nobody walks away from getting in a fight unscathed um, unless you get a lucky sucker punch at the first at the start. But that's beside the point. You know, a long time ago, my dad's generation, they get in a fight, you know, if they had to, if, if it wouldn't stop and that was it and you had enough. You just knock the crap out of the other guy and, and you'd fight it out. And no, everybody would go home and lick their wounds, realize that it's stupid to fight. But the other guy would realize it's stupid to keep bullying this kid and possibly bullying in general. But now we have a system that is so litigious that it will throw adolescents into prison or juvie or whatever. And there's harsh consequences. If you get bullied and you fight back, you are the one who ends up in trouble. You're the one who gets suspended or expelled. You're the one who goes to jail potentially, um, gets put in juvenile facilities. You know, you're the one charged with felonies. If you're a 13 year old kid being bullied and you fight back, it's insane. The environment is insane. When my parents grew up, they could get in a fight. And generally speaking, what would happen is somebody would come in and break it up but nobody would walk away unscathed and they would learn the hard way that you can't act like that. The person who, who started the fight would learn that, well, you can't start a fight without walking away with some bruises and, and broken bones, scars, whatever. And the person who had to respond to the fight, well, I mean, they had to respond to the fight, but the point is they were allowed to defend themselves against the bad behavior. Nowadays, if you defend yourself against bad behavior, you're punished for it. What lesson does that teach? So yeah, obviously you can't retain being a kid today. You know, the whole, the, the creativity, the exploration, the trying things out, it's a more dangerous time than ever to keep that side of yourself. That's why the kids are so miserable. They're forced to be adults. That's why the adults are so miserable. They're forced to be adults that have completely peeled all of the childish wonder out of their souls so that they can just suffer. But my message to you with this video, the whole point of what I'm saying is that despite all of this, you need to fight really hard to maintain, to keep the child side of you alive. Don't let people tell you that something can't be funny. Don't let people tell you that you're not allowed to think something is different from popular opinion. Don't let people tell you that you can't think different that you can't behave a little different. But at the same time, you do need to be an adult. You do need to realize that sometimes being different is bad when different means you run around groping people <laughs> just randomly in public or licking the tops of ice cream uh, and putting it back in the freezer uh, and so on. You get the idea. So yeah, keep the adult side that doesn't do incredibly stupid things, but don't grow up into a stodgy scumbag that doesn't have any notion of exploration, creativity, or really individuality. And that's the thing, is that being different is what makes you an individual. Now, some people take that to the extreme even today, and they go, oh, well, I'm 
going to declare myself to be a, a bi-gendered girl with rambling, you know, boy spirit tendency or whatever, you know, and they come up with increasingly bizarre genders or whatever, just because they're seeking a way to be unique, not realizing that being an individual is not what you label yourself as being different from everybody else's label. It's the sum of your experiences molding how you behave. Don't let yourself grow up too much, ever. Throughout your entire life, you will be better served if you don't let other people dictate, <laughs> through, directly or indirectly, that you're not allowed to be different and to think things are fun and to enjoy things that they don't like or that they have been taught is some sort of negative thing. Um, this actually, this kind of goes back to crude humor in specific. That's really one of the motivating factors for this video. Well, I think there's gonna be some bloopers after that one. So stick around after the end to see that crap. Okay, I'm gonna cut this off because I think I've said my piece. But, uh, oh yeah, crude humor. Yeah, um, you're not allowed to be edgy. Ed edgy is immature and all that. Nah, that's not true. It's just that some people think that it somehow makes them better than you if they think that that stuff is not okay. And you know what? Snobs are scum. And snobs can just jump off a cliff. Don't let them control you. All right, take care. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. What you label yourself as being different from everybody else's label it's the sum of your experiences molding how you behave. I think the lady behind me might have a little bit of a problem. That's really one of the motivating factors for this video. Sorry, sometimes you just gotta give them the old manual break. This lady has some kind of a problem, dude. I don't know what's wrong. Another one for the blooper reel, I guess. Problem solved.